Are you ready? It's the roundtable with me, Robert Bannon. Well, it's another week. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Hi, everybody. My name is Robert Bannon. This is the roundtable. It's where artists come to talk about art, and we're having a special after school edition. It's an I'm not home. I'm in the fifth grade classroom. Writing happens here. And speaking of writing, last week during the break, uh, I head over to the Vineyard. The Vineyard is a legendary performing arts center. Some of the greatest pieces of work ever have come out of, of the vineyard. And um, I saw something that on paper, I was like 80 minutes, one person, a story about a missing friend, what is gonna happen? And a lot happened. We have the writer here, David Kale is here and welcome to the round table. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Robert, thank you. Um, I have a lot of questions because um, I'm an actor and um, and when I think of a one man show or one person show, um, it's invigorating and scary and um, all of the things. Can you tell me where the idea of Sandra came about and how long you worked on it? Uh, you know, I had I had written uh, this show called Harry Clark, a solo play with Billy Crudup. And that had elements of a thriller in it. And I was really, intrigued by the idea of could could I write a one woman thriller and could one woman on stage telling a story have the same effect or qualities as as a as a movie thriller basically so that was that was what started it but then I just started writing and it was very much from the imagination and I have to say I sat down. I don't want to give any spoilers away, obviously. The stage start, the set of the show, which you can see in production photos, which we have, you know, we have a, one right here. It's, that is the set. The set is, is a, a chair and it is really a story being told by one person. Yeah. And it's a, a ambitious tall order as an actor and as a writer and as a director to put something that's going to en engage us. But I was fascinated by A, her her choices and her behavior yeah. and how she tells the story and B, your writing because it takes us on a wild journey without giving too much away. Can you tell us the premise of Sandra? Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's basically about a, uh, a cafe owner, a woman in Crown Heights, Brooklyn, whose closest friend is a is a young, a younger, gay composer, um, pianist who goes to Puerto Vallarta in Mexico and doesn't come back, and she senses that there's not enough effort being made trying to see what has happened, track him down, and she goes to Mexico herself, and becomes involved in this very steamy romance with someone and that so what start what starts off as like a, a quest to find a missing friend can evolves into this unexpected affair and segues into a thriller when she finds herself going more and more into dangerous territory Shit, that she does, and <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of plot. There's a lot. It's very, <laughs> yeah, and it keeps you on your toes, and you move, and it's part love story, it's part comedy, it's part suspense thriller. If you're someone who loves movies, I thought of a lot of movies and and different. Um, I've never seen a play like this, David, where I felt the intensity of the mystery and the suspense that I would think of when I go to the local AMC to see a, a, a suspense thriller movie, you, you created such a cinematic mastery of the language and the life on that stage oh. with one person. Thank you, thank you. That's what I was hoping to do. And also I was very interested, her friend, whose name is Ethan, who, who has gone missing, she has a CD of his piano compositions that he's never released. And she she plays his music throughout the uh, the play, so uh, I was really interested in. I'd never seen a solo show that had an original piano score, and my musical collaborator Matthew Dean Marsh 
wrote this, I, it's, I think it's really an exquisite piano score, but it's mostly motivated by, she plays it in scenes. So his, in a way, his kind of spiritual presence is um, represented by his recordings. So I, I was really happy with the way that came out. Also, it's such an incredible production, at least Lee Silverman directed it. And it's and it's it, it's extremely beautifully designed. Um, Rachel Hauk did the set, and and Tom Weaver did the, the lighting. And it's I, I was over the moon by the physical production, which and the lighting looks a, very deliberately so, uh, like Edward Hopper paintings, mm -hmm. which we didn't know that this huge Edward Hopper New York show was going to open to Whitney it was. <laughs> It's a tie-in. Yes, <laughs> without even knowing. Isn't without that, knowing. That's called the universe, David, truly. <laughs> I, was like, I cannot believe that the two things are opening at the same time. But I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's sort of an inside thing with us, but it was quite remarkable. And the, the poster was based on, um, on a, a Hopper painting. So yeah, it's we, beautiful. Of um, Morning Sun, so. Well, well, let me ask you a question a little bit, if you don't mind, about the backstory and your process. Yeah. So you come up with this idea, you sit down, a lot of people who don't write like myself, the idea of opening that Google Doc or Microsoft, however you write, and seeing that blank page staring at it, it's, it's terrifying. It's terrifying. Do you outline? Do you start with no. this? What do you do? No, I never outline. Sometimes I knew, I sometimes know roughly where the person is going to end up, the character, r roughly. Uh, but in, but I don't outline at all. I find it really makes me self-conscious. So it's really sort of following clues. I, I'll get to this place and I think, well, what if this happens? And, and I write out loud so I can hear it. And I think if it doesn't ring true, I can feel it just by hearing it in the room. Um, but it just, it was just a question of, okay, what, what if this happens? And then you figure out that situation and then, well, what if this happened from there? So it, it was, it was almost like making a puzzle. And when this was, how many years did you work on, or time did you work on this? Well, it was because of COVID, it was supposed to happen last year and it's just been delayed. It was, it was, uh. I guess it was originally supposed to happen two years ago, but but the, there was so much uncertainty uh, in, in terms of whether the theater would be able to open and what have you. So it's it's taken longer. It's taken longer than I would have liked, in a sense. But I think the script has really benefited from it because we worked on it more. And Lee Silverman is an incredible editor, so she has really had a lot of input on the writing, which she did with Harry Clark. Um, and also, we, I really wanted it to, to, to fit Marjan Neshat, who plays um, Sandra. I wanted it to really fit her like a beautiful gown or something. So, so that certain things, I would hear her do things and it would give me ideas. And, and I, I was in awe of her. The, the daunting task she has for that 80 minute roller coaster that she's on physically and emotionally. Yeah, in her life. Yeah. How was the casting process? Were you a part of that? Did you yeah, very okay. much. And it took a long time. Um, I just, also it was getting delayed and delayed. And the um, and then um, David Caporaliotis, the casting director said, you should see Marjan Neshat. And I've been living upstate for the last year. I mean, I'm in the city now, but I, so I hadn't seen these three, these two plays that she had done back to back, that she'd received a lot of acclaim. But uh, David said, see her in Wish You Were Here, which was running at Playwrights Horizons. And I said, I'll try and see her tonight. And I went online and there was one ticket available. And I was like, this is curious. <laughs> and as soon as I, I just knew that night that I wanted to approach her, I mean, my, my agent is a fan of hers. So my agent was like, text me after the show. Tell me what you think. And I, I just knew I, I wanted to approach her. I we didn't know if she'd want to do it. But because I know it, it's very frightening to a lot of actors to be alone on stage. Um, but 
the um but then then she said yes and we proceeded oh i i think it's invigorating the challenge of it has to be if, it, if it's that if that's your thing yeah. that has to be such a, a joy to live that that emotional life every single night i, th I think so i mean the I know it's, I know it's, I mean, Marjan had never been on stage alone before. So it was, but I just was, I was sure she was the right person. And I know it's been, it's, it's a very difficult show. It's 43 days tomorrow. It's, it's, it's a very hard, I didn't want to, I told her recently, I've written like 12 one person shows. This is, it's, it's up there definitely with being the hardest. Which I didn't want to tell her going into it. It's a really hard show to perform. It's it's I, you know, it's, I I've I've performed most of my shows, and to see if it worked, I read it. I did a reading of it, and it's it's hard to read, but the reading is so much easier than actually performing it. It's very very difficult, um, but she's really pulling it off. It's like it's. I, I went last night. I, I took Saturday off. I've been at every performance. And last night it was, I was like, oh my gosh, she's just growing and growing. And it's, it's, it's incredible. Well, I, like I said before, and I, I keep repeating, I, I love the style of your writing of this because it adds a lot of colors to the person. It's not just, I'm sad my friend is missing. I'm scared my friend is missing you add a lot of el other elements. It's a very layered and textured piece. There's there's love and there's longing and there's loss and there's confusion and questioning the friendship and the main circumstance, but also it's a real um, introspective piece about a person's mindset and what they're going through in their life. Yeah. So no matter where you are in your life, that you will, obviously, hopefully your friend is not missing, <laughs> but yeah. you you will find pieces of, of things you relate to and emotions that are connected to. I think it's a very universally told story. Oh, thank you. I was really hoping that the, the, the audience members would be able to really relate to it because she airs a lot of her sort of inner life and her inner feelings. And especially, I, I, I thought it would be particularly resonant now by accident because it's, it's a, it's a, it's also a character, a, a woman who really needs a dramatic life change. And I mean, it, she gets a very dramatic version of a very dramatic life change. But it's, but it's, I think it's, I know a lot of people post COVID are really questioning what they're doing with their life and, uh, and how they're doing it. And I thought it's, it felt, it felt in, in, in step with the moment in a, in a funny way. Uh, in that regard, so, um, but uh, job well done because it's, it's what thank I felt you. when I when I left, and um, I, I, it made me think for sure while I was sitting there. Uh, for can you explain? Leave a lot of people who are aspiring performers, writers, directors that that check in and watch us. We we pride ourselves on being entertainment and education. When you write something like this for people who are unsure or or in high school or in college that want to write, what was the process? for you, obviously your representation, et cetera, but what do you, can you tell us a little bit about how you got started submitting your work to be put on stage and how that kind of process works for, for the general theater yeah. community? Yeah, I mean, the thing, I came from music and I was writing songs and then I started reading the words of poetry readings and then someone there said, take them to this little theater in the West Village, that they have an evening of performance exploration and. And these little monologues, I just, these spoken songs, I, I would, they got longer and longer and more theatrical. But but the thing that I found is I still have to do this. I have to sort of, in order to, to, to not be paralyzed by, by the beginning of beginning these pieces, I think, oh, I'll write five minutes, a, 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 a five minute piece. And then they sort of get longer, but I have to sort of, a little bit like I was going to say con, but it isn't. It's just I have to, I I I have to take away the the pressure of oh you have to write a new show. Mm -hmm. And I think all to say I think if people are starting, it's really good to start small, and it's really important to finish it, whatever you're doing, as opposed to just have a lot of beginnings 
And it's really good to just get it out there in whatever form, in like in an open mic or read it for friends, just get it in motion. Because I don't think, I don't think you, I don't think you know what you can do till you're actually doing it. You can think about this or be afraid of it. I know it's several things I've been really terrified of doing and really wanted to pull out of. They've, they've been the things I'm proudest of. So it's, 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 um, and, and with this, I mean, it, it was just a question of, with, with this particular script, I just sent it to the theater because I'd done another show with them and we've been friends for a long time. But it's, it's just it's pushing the boat out all the time and, and, and persevering and not being put off by rejection. I know I couldn't get anything produced for years. Uh, and then Harry Clark, came it, it produced in new york i was doing stuff out of new york and then harry like the vineyard theater wrote to me and they said do you have anything that could go into production this was the end of june could go into production in the fall which is like a couple of months away and i had i sent them three scripts that hadn't been produced but it, it was a lesson to me in and harry clark was by far the most successful show that, that i had done to that point but it also, but it's, but the the lesson for me was, even if you feel like nobody's interested in what you're doing, if you get that call, if I hadn't kept working, then there would be nothing to send them. So it, it's just you have to, you just have to, you have to persevere. It's really the key to it. And when people, when it seems like no one is interested, it, they, things can turn around very quickly, and you have to be kind of prepared for it. By doing it, I think st yeah, staying ready and being ready staying for staying ready and keeping yourself in mentally in, in in a healthy place and and trying not to just dip into despondency, which is it's a very hard territory. It's very easy to do, but it's not impossible. So, and things can happen, and and you can really surprise yourself. That's very inspiring, I think, for any business, because I think we all get kind of stuck on the result more than the process. And yeah. we're waiting for this. I'm, I needed to be here. I'm ready to be. At the, but along the journey is where you kind of live your life. And, and, and you that's an a, a important reminder. So thank you. Um, you talked about working with the vineyard in the past. Um, you know, the vineyard, I, I can name a lot of shows, Avenue Q and Indecent and et cetera, and et cetera. And all these shows, these big bohemian shows that come out of this theater it's one of the most beautiful theaters in new york city it's there's not a bad seat in the no, it's really house. a jewel it's, it's i love that theater and it is literally a a palette of what can be done in that space like they can you can do anything in that beautiful space as you said a jewel yeah. um what was it like to move it from the page onto the stage especially in that space in particular well the, the you know i've I've done one other one woman show, but I performed it. And I know it, it ran in Los Angeles recently um, with, with, with Nancy Travis, but I, I didn't get to see that. But I also say I've never seen a woman perform a one woman show of mine. So that was, that was immediate, it was, it was immediately really exciting. And also, you know, I just, I wanted to make sure it rang true from a kind of a, a a woman's perspective um but then because i re i really love this design team so i was very excited when i saw the um the drawings for the, rachel's drawings for the set and then seeing in seeing it in the theater it's always really thrilling to walk into a theater and they're building and building the set and they're painting it and like the back wall it's I, it's there's a there's a, a kind of very treated back wall to this stage um and it's it's really textured and it's really hard to do that i've tried it i've had another show where we tried to do it and it's it's not easy to look good and this one looks great it's beautifully painted and and um and the lighting is just so exquisite so i i was you know, it's it's really thrilling to actually go into a theater and like, oh, this is really happening, and there's all these seats and people are coming. I mean, it's still after all these years, it still like sort of takes you back when you walk in, knowing that this, 
this baby of yours that you've been working on for a long time is going to be in this room for you know a couple of months well it's magic it's 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 a magic moment and it's a it's a beautiful uh show and a beautiful moment and um congratulations because you guys have you're extended you can see it we're extended i'm so thrilled about that you just have to go look if you're in new york city or in the area and you have nothing to do on a, a night during the week or a weekend you want a perfect little date night in downtown new york and go eat at a nice little restaurant and come have a nice little moment together it's something that is not for a particular group, it's this is not, you don't have to like a musical, you don't yeah. have to like a heavy drama. This is something that we could all really enjoy. Everyone will find something out of this and that's what's so great about this piece. It's, thank you. It's really getting a wide range of people coming, and ages and just, it's, a, it's, it's, it's just a very mixed audience often. Um, and there's these community support, that I love that the vineyard does this. They have these community supported subsidized seats in the front two rows and the front two rows with this are excellent and they're a lower price ticket so it makes it more accessible to more people it's 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 wonderful and that's what that's what art is all about so go to yes. vineyard theater go to vineyardtheater.org get your tickets until the 18th and if you want to follow david in his journey he's on instagram you can follow him at david kale and you can find more information and david i'm so excited to see what else what other magic you have up that sleeve and what's coming i've got two new shows so two other new ones i i'm ready I'm, I'm ready. Uh, I need to know what else is in that that <laughs> brain of yours. They're very different. <laughs> I, I'm sure, and I'm excited. Well, I'll be following, and I'm a fan. Oh, and, uh, thank you. It means a lot for you to join us today and to share some of your humanity, creativity, and and um, your view of, of the world and, and your stories. Uh, it definitely inspired me and um, made me think about about life, but also about art and what, what seems impossible or scary, you know, it can be done if you do it, it well. Done. It can be done. Thank you so much. Everyone get your tickets. Make sure you see Sandra right now at the Vineyard Theater. Go to vineyardtheater.org and uh, hope to see you there. Uh -huh. Thank you, Robert. Thank you.